Hello everybody. I um, wanted to make a video on how I prepared a WR250R for a recent trip to uh, Moab, Utah. I live in southern New Jersey and uh, there's a lot of sand, not uh, very many rocks at all, no elevations, so uh, I wasn't quite sure how to prepare the bike to ride in uh, a rocky terrain. Um, and to cover the distances that I would need to cover from my uh, hotel. Um, out there it's pretty remote, there's no gas stations and uh, I needed a bit more than a 100 mile range that I could count on the stock two gallon tank for. So uh, I'll get started on uh, each mod one by one that made this trip successful for me. Okay, the, uh, the first mod that I did was to install a Tusk rear fender rack. And what that does is it mounts to the rear subframe uh, utilizing the same bolts that hold the tail light bracket on. Uh, you had to drill four uh, holes into the plastic of the rear fender so that it could mount with those little spacers through the fender into the frame. And uh, I did that. Wasn't too happy about drilling holes in my fender, but what are you going to do? Anyway, uh, I installed that rack and the intention of the rack was not for a tail bag uh, or anything like that. It was for the Rotopax gas can mount. Uh, like I mentioned before, the stock tank I can count on a range of about 100 miles at home anyway at the speeds that you ride at home. Uh, I didn't want to risk it. I know that when I rode the right rim trail that the white rim trail was going to be about 100 miles and it was about 40 miles well maybe 30 miles from my hotel to get there and back so I needed a range of about 160 miles that I could count on so what I did was I installed the Rotopax mount I didn't use the plate that came with it uh, I simply drilled two holes into the rack and I used the two mounting bolts from underneath that go up through into this uh, Rotopax mount. So basically I purchased the um, two gallon Rotopax can. There it is right here. I'll show you how it mounts. What you do is there's a there's a key in the can. You put it over top of the mount. And then what you do is you grab this little little handle and it's threaded. I don't know if you can see it too well, but there's two little nubs on the can and there's two little detents in the handle. Okay, so what you do is you just start threading it. You turn it by hand. There, and then it gets tight. And what you do is you turn it until it's kind of tight. It'll snap in place. There. And it's mounted pretty tightly as you can see it doesn't move that much one warning I can give you when you tighten it you get to a certain point and you'll have a little play in the gas can I went one more turn so that it was tight and it wouldn't bounce and vibrate well when I left my hotel in the morning it was uh, 45 degrees in the afternoon when I needed the two gallons to get back uh, the sun had been beating on the can, the temperature was about 78 degrees, and I guess the gas in the can expanded. And believe it or not, I could not loosen the Rotopax mount. It was so tight from the expansion that my fingers weren't strong enough to do it. So thankfully I had an adjustable wrench in my tool bag that I was able to put on the end and turn it off. So that's a word of warning. If you don't have tools with you, and you fill up your gas can cold and it gets warmer throughout the day, be careful. You might be carrying gas that you can't use because you can't get the handle off. So uh, take that advice. Okay, so the next thing I did, added on, was a uh, moose skid plate. Um, I believe that this one's been discontinued. Uh, it's plastic. And I, I know what most people's opinion of is plastic. It's, it's junk. It's not going to protect your case very well in rocks. But uh, 
I don't like the metal ones because again, like I said at home, I don't really need it. We don't have rocks. And I know that the metal ones echo a lot of sound from the engine and I've ridden ones before and it sounds like a completely different bike. So what I did was I bought the plastic skid plate under the assumption that it's better than nothing. So I know a lot of people are going to say, boy, that's worthless. But again, I bought it with the assumption that it was better than having nothing at all. So, and again, I was very mindful about, you know, being in rocks and I know the case was vulnerable. And uh, again, it, uh, it held up pretty well. But again, I did not case a lot of rocks. So I installed that skid plate. It's not actually the plastic one is not bad looking. I like it because it's black. It uh, doesn't really look bad when it gets scratched up. But again, it's probably half worthless. Okay, the next thing I added to the bike was, and this is the biggest thing, I was very feel fearful of uh, getting flat tires. Uh, back in my younger days, I rode a lot of Enduros that were out in Pennsylvania. And um, their shale and uh, the single track was rocky. And I don't know why, but I never had good luck. I, constantly got pinch flats so uh, the main thing I was worried about was you know what kind of tubes do I run in the tires so that I don't get flats out there or minimize the amount of flats I get I didn't want to change tires on the trail back in the day I used moose tubes for the Enduros because I didn't have to worry about flats but they weren't going to work in Moab there was a a lot of distance to cover and there was also a lot of road riding to get where I wanted to be. Uh, I know the moose tubes would not hold up. They would melt on the road. Uh, I know they build up heat. They are not made for uh, asphalt driving. And uh, what I did was I got the tubeless tire system. Okay, so let me show you a little bit about the tubeless tire system. What you have to do to install it is you have to drill another hole into your rim which is four spokes from the valve stem all right uh, what happens is this orange valve stem is the high pressure tube inside that has to be pumped up to 100 to 110 psi and what that does is it's an inner tube that sits in the, de the drop center of the rim and what it does is when you pressurize that tube it actually pushes against the bead of the tire and it seals the bead of the tire to the rim and then the second uh, valve is a combination rim lock and Schrader valve that you inflate the pressure into your tire so uh, I ran uh, 10 PSI in the tire and uh, tell you the truth the best thing I could have done for my trip to Moab was to add the tubeless tire system I never used it before I was extremely hesitant about installing it because again I've never used it before uh, I put it on about a week before I left I took it out for a test drive didn't get a flat the tire sealed I followed the instructions to the T for the install which by the way uh, that's probably the most important part um, using the soapy water um, if you look it up if you go to tubeless.com they've got videos with instructions on how to install it and they stress absolutely stress that critical to success using the system is to follow their directions um, that weirded me out a little bit but again follow the instructions and I went to Moab I rode rocks I hit rocks after a couple days I stopped even worrying about getting flats I had zero tire failures which was uh, unbelievable uh, there was a few times where I hit a few rocks you can't see them you come down the road there's a rock in the ground it catches your sidewall I know I would have got pinch flats um, I had zero issues whatsoever so I can't say enough about the tubeless tire system that's a uh, hundred dollars for the front um, uh, for 21 inch and for the rear again it was a hundred dollars so for two hundred dollars 
best investment you could make if you're worried about getting flats. If you figure uh, two heavy duty tubes are going to cost you 80 to begin with. Uh, and then you're going to have to bring spares with you. So, you know, there's another $80. So really it's, it's a good value for what I got. Again, that's the best test. I took it out, had no issues. In addition to the tubeless tire system, I also installed two brand new tires, one front and one rear. Um, I've had success with Kenda Trackmaster 2 uh, DOT approved tires. So again, I use the K760 Trackmaster 2 rear tire for the rear and I use the K760 Trackmaster 2 tire for the front. Um, I can tell you that going out and riding in the rocks, these are brand new tires, uh, but honestly I've got went about 1,500 miles on the trails and uh, they're kind of beat, but still 1,500 miles isn't bad for rock, trails, asphalt, you name it. So uh, there, I wanted to leave with new tires. Also when you install the tubeless tire system, they will tell you use brand new tires if you're using a standard tube system. Uh, the reason for that is the rim lock on a uh, when you're using a tube, the rim lock actually crimps the bead of the tire. And when you remove a tire that's had a standard rim lock on it, there's actually a crimp in there and that crimp will definitely cause problems with the new tubeless, uh, the tubeless system creating a seal on that bead once it's crimped. So when I took the old tires off and uh, I could see that there was a crimp, I couldn't get it out, I even heated the rubber and it's not going to work. It was not worth trying to use used tires with the tubeless system. So purchasing brand new ones, you're guaranteeing success. So uh, that's my advice on installing tires with the tubeless system. Uh, the next thing that I added was a um, radiator guard. I purchased the Unibiker radiator guard. I was afraid I was going to fall over and bust the radiator. Don't want to do that. Uh, I never had one on this bike before. Uh, the install wasn't too difficult. Uh, it's kind of fun to line up the holes. Uh, thankfully I started out with a perfectly straight radiator and apparently that's the key. If your radiator is bent or warped that's where you have problems. But uh, didn't have any issue with that. The other thing I usually had, uh, I've already had, was a set of hand guards um, with the shields. You're going to want the hand guards for sure because if you do fall over in the rocks uh, or fall over anywhere you don't want to break your levers. So uh, that's some good protection. I did fall over one time, put a nice little ding in my hand guard, but uh, my levers stayed intact. Uh, out there, you get on a rock, you stop. I couldn't reach the ground, fell over, hit the handlebars. Uh, glad I had the radiator guards on there, but uh, I had no damage, which is, which is good. Okay, the, uh, the only other things that I did that are usual maintenance uh, before I went on a trip where I knew I'd be in remote locations and cover a lot of miles was uh, I changed the fork seals. Um, after 19,000 miles on this WR, uh, my fork seals were seeping a little bit and uh, you know I didn't want to deal with that. So I changed the fork seals. Also, I uh, put a new set of uh, chain and sprocket on new front sprocket, new rear sprocket, and a uh, Renthal R1 chain so I didn't have any uh, drive issues. And uh, truthfully, that's about it. Once I did that, I was prepared for the trip. Uh, there are a few notes I can tell you. If you take a trip to Moab and you have the same concerns about mileage as I do, well, I can tell you that going up and down through the canyons you're going to get much better mileage out of your stock two gallon tank. Usually around home I get about 52 miles per gallon. When I was in Moab 
um, when you ascend and descend the canyons, you're going kind of slow. Actually, when you descend, you're on the brakes, you're not on the gas, and I wound up getting about 63 or 64 miles per gallon when I rode the uh, White Rim Trail. So I bought the two gallon Rotopax. I could have got away with the one gallon can because I could count on 120 miles out of my stock tank. Uh, also related to the Rotopax, you can see it sits kind of high on your fender and uh, you've got you know two gallons of gas and the extra weight. Uh, I know some people have commented that they don't notice it's back there um, and that's true and not true at the same time. Uh, when you're riding, I noticed it was back there. I absolutely noticed, but not to the extent that I thought I would. The biggest problem I had was not just weight. The weight didn't seem to be a big deal, uh, you know, unless I was doing a technical thing like the Slick Rock Trail where there's some like off camber turning sections, you could tell the uh, weights there. Normal riding, you won't, you'll notice it, but you know, it won't really affect you. The problem I had most was when you go to sit back on the seat and get back over bumps and try and loft the front wheel over things, you will hit into the gas can and it, uh, your body positioning just isn't right. But you know, honestly, there's nothing you can do. If you need the range and you don't want a giant um, Safari tank or the IMS tank, on your bike you don't have a choice and again I don't need the extra capacity at home I didn't want to change the tank and have it forever so I figured the Rotopax was perfect I could use it for the trip and then I could remove it when I returned okay so I think that sums up what I've done to the bike what I did for the trip uh, there was not much more I can think of that I would have needed um, is one other detail I'd like to show you. Uh, I purchased a Lazine high pressure bicycle pump and as you can see it's not really it's not really large it's small enough to fit into your backpack with the rest of your tools uh, it's capable of pumping up to 160 psi I know they make a couple of different models uh, the first one I ordered, I got the wrong one. I think it was 100 PSI. There's a high pressure one that goes 160, which is what's at, what I needed. The uh, tubeless tire system requires 100 to 110 PSI for the inner bladder. So I had to buy the high pressure one. Again, this pump was about $60. Uh, it also has a little gauge you can use right here on the, uh, on the hose that connects to the Schrader valve. Um, it's kind of hard to read, so I also took a tire gauge. But um, anyway, that was about $60. And you could check the pressure in your high pressure tube every day before your ride. Uh, there's been a lot of comments that the tubeless tire system high pressure um, tube, inner tube, loses some uh, air per day. And uh, that's a little true. Uh, I pump it up to 110 psi. A couple days later I'd check it, it might be a hundred, but honestly when you put the tire gauge on it, you lose five pounds also. It's a um, low volume, high pressure tube. So, you know, I've had heavy duty tubes that, you know, I'll put 15 pounds in and a week later I'll check them and they're 10 pounds. So the heavy duty tubes lose air as well. So that's not something new to the tubeless tire system. Uh, tubes do lose air. Anyway, I bought the pump. I was able to check my tire pressure every day. Uh, there was a couple days that didn't even bother because I realized the lowest it ever got without maintaining it was 95 and that's more than sufficient to uh, for the inner tube to act as a beadlock. The only other thing I bought to put my backpack to bring with me was a uh, tire plug kit. This one I got at Walmart. I think Slime makes it. It's got the uh, tire plugs, it's got the tools to plug a tire. Uh, if you get a flat with the tubeless tire system, uh, if it's not the inner tube, which most likely it won't be, if you get a puncture in the tire itself, since it's now a tubeless tire, you can use the same plugs that you would use on your car or your truck 
to uh, fix a flat. So uh, thankfully I did not have any punctures in the tire and um, I didn't have to use it. But those two things I would recommend bringing with you um, if you have the tubeless tire system rather than a spare tube um, and that should take care of uh, any of the common punctures you have. I mean if, you, if the inner high pressure tube fails there's no substitute other than uh, changing that or you know using a standard patch kit on the trail but I would not want to deal with that but again that's unlikely that that inner tube would uh, fail. So anyway uh, hope you enjoyed the video I don't think I missed anything I think I did the best I could to prepare my bike for the trip I spent a week in Moab I put over 1500 miles on the bike on the trails and uh, that's it uh, I hope this video helps I've got other videos out there of my trip to Moab if you want to see what it's like if you're thinking about going if you uh, everyone experienced the uh, canyons and the trails and the inclines it's I can tell you it's an absolute life-changing experience to uh, go out west and see that okay thanks for watching